So first of all, uh, thank you again for being here, and I'd like to sort of get a feel for who's in the room. How many moms do we have in the room? Oh, beautiful, wow. How many dads? Dads, excellent. Students? Students and students, wonderful. Thank you, aunties and uncles too? Yeah? Okay, excellent. And already, uh, well actually I know that there's a uh, political person here tonight, Mr. Browning from the Green Party. He just spoke about GMOs at the Parliament on Wednesday. Can we, give, can we acknowledge him for that? Almost everything that you see on the grocery store aisles 
um, are, have GMO ingredients in them. And um, if you're not familiar, that means soy, cotton, canola oil, corn, sugar beets, which are our main source of sugar. It's actually 100% of sugar beets in the U.S. now are, are GMO. Hawaiian papaya and also many acres of Hawaiian, um, sorry, of perfect neck squash and zucchini are GMO. So GMOs, to sum it up, are genetically engineered to either be a pesticide or to resist herbicides. And the one that is a pesticide means that it's registered with the EPA as a pesticide. That BT toxin is put into the DNA of, it, of that corn, and, for instance, and when a bug eats it, its stomach explodes. And that's what we eat in our tortillas, in our cereal, in our corn syrup, in our corn oils. Um, also, the resisting herbicides you've heard a lot about, that's the one that resists Roundup, so that everything else around it dies, but our food does not. GMOs are essentially a chemical delivery system to humans. They are engineered so that chemical, chemical companies can sell more chemicals to the farmers. 80% of GMOs are engineered to withstand Roundup, and you've heard a lot about that. Roundup is also sprayed now as a drying agent on non-organic foods at harvest, just to speed up the process so that they can harvest everything at once. If you want to see what the, the allowable levels of glyphosate are on our foods in America, which is what a lot of people follow, this, there is a list of 160 foods that are with allowable levels over, far above what has been shown to destroy gut bacteria in chickens. And that's on our website under data, along with a lot of other scientific studies. You also want to know that there are hundreds of super weeds that now resist Roundup. And there was a 73% increase of the use of Roundup in 2013 alone. I don't know about you, but I am concerned if there's any increase of like 73% of any kind of chemical anywhere. So why moms? Well, of course, we love dads and the students and everybody else too, but we want to amplify the voice of the mom. And because historically, moms have determined the longevity of a culture through careful food preparation. We trusted our instincts, because if we fed our tribes poison berries or rotten food, the tribe would perish, right? The men would protect and provide, but the mothers would decide what the tribe ate. And so it was very important that we trusted our instincts. However, for the past 20 years, moms in the U.S. have not been able to trust their instincts because the GMO food has not been labeled. So um, we have seen that the health of our nation has declined. So what are we doing about it? Well, I had the idea when I asked myself, um, how can I raise awareness, awareness with as many people as possible about GMOs? And I thought about Fourth of July parades. But um, actually, let me step back a little bit. So why, why did I do that? So I'm at election night when we are um, voting on Prop 37, and I'm sitting at the back of the room, and there's a leader at the front of the room who's acknowledging everybody for helping out. And I thought about my role, and I thought about, huh, why is she at the front of the room and I'm at the back of the room? Right? Nothing wrong with that, but if I had taken on leadership and I like owned this campaign, my actions definitely would have been different. Right? So I just started to start to think about my part in the campaign and what I had done. And then when we lost, I was crying out in the car in the parking lot, and my nine-year-old son said to me, Well, you know, Mom, even Star Wars took six episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and they had Yoda. And I thought, yeah, well, maybe it's time for a new episode, and maybe this time I'll be a leader, right? So I asked myself, how can I raise awareness with as many people as possible in the shortest amount of time? And I put together uh, Patriotism on a Plate, which is Robin O'Brien's TED Talk, I highly recommend it, and Genetic Roulette, um, Jeffrey Smith's concept of the tipping point. You only need to reach so many people. So I thought about reaching a lot of people on Patriotic Day, I found a thought of uh, Fourth of July parades, because this, this parade, for instance, Three people deep for three miles equals 49,000 people. Moms across America march to label GMOs. People see the word GMOs and moms and start to wonder, what's that about, right? Family fun, friendly, patriotic day nationwide. We reach thousands locally and millions nationally in a single day. Here we are all across the country in just some of the locations, Idaho, Pennsylvania, Texas, Colorado. People made wonderful banners and floats even. Um, here we are in 172 locations across the country for our first event. Our Facebook page went from a reach of zero to 300,000 a week in the first four, four months. Yeah, because, and why? Because moms share because they care. And when they start finding out about solutions, they share that, right? 
So here we are. Um, and what are we finding out when we reach all of these moms across the nation? Um, by the way, we have over 440 leaders now in 44 states that have caused over 500 events in the first 18 months. So these are really passionate moms that want healthy children. So we're reaching out, we're getting testimonials from moms. First of all, my testimonial is that my son Ben, he um, that red uh, rash around his mouth after going GMO free for four months, that line around his mouth was dramatically decreased. You can barely see a faint pink line under his lip that lasted two days instead of two weeks. Um, and we, this is important to know because inflammation caused by allergies can cause stomach ulcers, which can cause stomach cancer. And, um, and the inflammation is not the, um, the rash on the outside is not the problem. The rash is actually the body's way of telling you that there's inflammation going on in the gut. It's actually a good thing, it's a warning signal. So I'm really glad for that because we were able to um, cut back on GMOs or almost completely eliminate GMOs, putting green drinks in his diet, probiotics, and, um, and I believe we are preventing him from stomach, stomach cancer by going GMO free. And by the way, a year after going organic as well, uh, his walnut allergy, we almost lost him twice in the hospital because of his nut allergy. It was really, um, nobody, no parent should ever have to go through that. But now his walnut allergy has gone from a rating of a 19 down to a 0.2. So he no longer has a life-threatening food allergy. Here's Jennifer Lawrenson. She says, I had a team of awesome doctors at the Children's Hospital that could not figure out what was wrong with my daughter who was getting sick after nearly every meal. The moms posting on Facebook that their children got better when they got off GMOs nearly saved my daughter's life. That day, I went out and bought organic food and she stopped throwing up. Now, obviously, this isn't happening to every child or every person that eats GMOs, right? We, we think of it sort of like smoking. Um, it impacts some people, but not others. However, the difference is we don't have a choice about eating. We all need to eat. And some scientists say that it is impacting all of us. We just may not see it. It may not be visible. Um, and I'm very concerned when I see things like a potato study that was accidentally sprayed with glyphosate. And that generation, that crop of potatoes were fine. But their offspring or their daughter crop was not fine. They were deformed and they could not reproduce. So it's very concerning about what's happening to our generation of children and future children. Karen from California told us that her son had daily asthma attacks, needed glasses, and was recommended to be held back a year at school. When she found out about GMOs and switched to organic, his asthma disappeared, he no longer needed glasses, and he is now at the top of his class. Cindy from Rhode Island has a severely autistic teenage son. And by the way, she makes 40,000, she's a single mom. But she found out about GMOs two years ago and went all organic. Her son entered high school this past fall, and not one of his teachers could tell that he was ever autistic. Now, these two boys have new futures because their moms found out about GMOs and glyphosate. And we say that our country and even our world has a new future because their moms found out about GMOs and glyphosate. Who knows what these two boys will invent or contribute to our society? Think about Google, two guys, right? So glyphosate test results. First of all, why your mom want to test for glyphosate? Well, you just heard all kinds of reasons why from Michelle and Michael. And um, I, so when I found out especially that it could destroy my children's gut bacteria and be related to allergies, I thought for sure I'm gonna find out if it's in my children. Um, I asked my doctors and labs and they said, no, we don't have testing because it's not considered unsafe. There's no reason to test for glyphosate. So after a year of bugging a farmer friend of mine, Howard Liger, a wonderful speaker and farmer, he convinced a lab owner to invest in glyphosate testing. So in 2014, Moms Across America set up for the first time in America the ability for citizens to test their urine and water for glyphosate and for the first time in the world, their breast milk. And the results were alarming. The water, and keep in mind that 0.1 parts per billion is what has been shown to destroy gut bacteria. Okay, so in upstate New York, we have 0.33 parts per billion. Around the country, we have levels, levels that are very close to, if not above, the 0.1 parts per billion. And in California, my tap water was the 0.085. Now, this was eliminated when I didn't put a reverse osmosis filter on it. Uh, I can't say eliminated. It went down to an undetectable level, below the 0.05. So I don't know if it's still there or not at an undetectable level below that. 
Um, but we did, re we did remove that level, that amount uh, with reverse osmosis. But if you do that, please put in trace minerals as well, because otherwise the water will sort of take out the calcium um, out of the bones. I don't know enough about that, but just put in trace minerals or Himalayan sea salt. Like I say, in urine, we found very worrying levels. 18.8 um, in a female college student with cancer in Oregon, 14.6 in a four-year-old girl with developmental disabilities, and 8.7 in my son in California. Now, this was my little son, not the other one that I showed you with the allergies, and, but this one had the red rash going on around his mouth, and he was not allergic to carrageenan. He was trying to hit his father and I. He had very erratic, irrational behavior all of a sudden. His teacher called me and said he's turning in papers, a quiz of 10 questions, doing one, and then turning in minus nine, just not even doing it. And this was a straight-A student who wanted to be the best. Um, bedwetting and you know all, just all kinds of health issues going on with him and I didn't know what it was so I took him to the doctor and um, he said well I'll test him for fungus because sometimes that impacts the brain. You remember what Dr. Michelle said about the pathogenic bacteria signaling the brain and inflammation, right? So we tested him and he was very high in fungus, very high in Clostridia C. difficile, um, also other pathogenic bacteria, all within levels of autistic kids. So I said, does he have autism? He says, no, he has autism symptoms, right? And um, so we treated the fungus. We did have to spend six hundred fifty dollars a month for that. We did have to spend eight hundred dollars for the testing, and that was only part of the of the bill. And then two hundred fifty dollars for the doctor's appointment. This was just for one doctor appointment. And um, we treated the fungus. We got rid of the glyphosate in his diet by eliminating wheat. That was the only difference between he and my other two sons. My other two sons are gluten intolerant. But he was not, so we were allowing him to eat at restaurants and out at Donna's house. And so I believe that's where the exposure to glyphosate came from, because after six weeks, his glyphosate levels were no longer detectable, and his autism symptoms were gone, and have not come back since. It's been over a year. He's now at the top of his class again. He's very helpful. He makes new brownies. He's a super helpful kid. Yeah, he's just, he's, he's back to who he was before. Now, glyphosate and breast milk. This was extremely concerning because we did not think we would find glyphosate in breast milk because the detectable levels for the tests that, we, that were available to us were only 75 parts per billion. So it had to be above 75 in order to be detectable. But we did find it at 76, 99, and 166 parts per billion. And this is just shocking. Um, you also want to keep in mind that 9 out of 10 of these women were Moms Across America supporters. So they knew about GMOs and glyphosate and they had been avoiding them for at least a few months, if not a few years. And the two moms that did have detectable levels at 76 and 99 uh, confessed to eating out at restaurants now and then, where the oil can be up to 40 parts per million of glyphosate. Um, I do want to point out that the two moms in the most highly sprayed areas in Indiana and Iowa did not have detectable levels. And that was really surprising because um, they, and they, they attributed that to eating organic. Now, the mom in, that had 166 parts per million was a nurse in a hospital in Florida, and she was a friend of an activist. So she was unaware of GMOs and glyphosate and was eating conventional American food. And this level is over 1,600 times higher than is allowed in the drinking water in Europe. This is just outrageous. It's also 3,000 times higher than has been shown to cause harm in Sarah Lini's study, the one that, caused, that showed um, liver and kidney damage, and sex hormone changes in rats. Absolutely shocking. So we were very upset. We contacted the EPA, and uh, because the EPA is the one that allows glyphosate to contaminate the 160 uh, of our foods at levels far above what it's been shown to destroy gut bacteria, we had a five-day campaign. Moms called the EPA to recall Roundup, and recall because when a, when a manufacturer says that a product's going to do something and it doesn't do that, you recall it, right? So, and these man the manufacturer, Monsanto, and many others said that it would, it would pass harmlessly through the urine. It would not collect in the body. Obviously, it's not doing that, so it's time to recall it, right? So we called, and on Wednesday, they said, can you, can you have these moms stop calling? Over 10,000 women have called. <laughs> and, by, and by Friday, they said, they really sounded like really upset. The voice was like shaking. They said, we've got to stop calling. We've got to do our jobs. And I said, your job is to recall Roundup. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to give up because the love for our children will never end. We're not just going to forget about this. And he said, well, I prefer to meet with principals. And so it just so happened I was going to the East Coast, and I rallied up a posse of lawyers, doctors, scientists, 
um, a couple of Marines, his moms, there were 11 of us, nine of them. We walked in and a one hour meeting turned into a two hour meeting. They were glued to their seats, nobody left, and there were dads and moms in that room. And I saw in their eyes that they got. Now, they couldn't recall, they didn't recall Roundup right away, but right now they are um, analyzing glyphosate in breast milk. They have agreed to do that, and this is really huge because that's how DTs and PCBs were banned. So um, I also want to mention that um, at this meeting, they said, well, we have hundreds of studies showing the safety of glyphosate, right? And I'm thinking, well, I haven't seen these studies. So I do a Freedom of Information Act, which is any American citizen can do, and request the studies. It takes six months, but I finally get them at the same time when they are reviewing glyphosate for a reapproval or not for the next 15 years, which they are currently doing right now. And I looked at these studies, and just to mention a few of them, one of them was an oyster study, a four-day, 96-hour toxicology study. And on this, on this um, study, it said, and I quote, by, um, with, by the end of the, sorry, at the end of the fourth day, most of the oysters were closed and not feeding. <laughs> That's like a coma. <laughs> and what happened after the fourth day? Right, what happened on day five or six? And closed and not feeding? I'm sorry, but I have a hard enough time feeding my kids as it is. I'm not interested in something that's going to make it harder, right? Um, in addition to that, there was another study that said that white shrimp live for, lived for four days up until 5.2 parts per million. That was the dose that they could put in the salt water, right, that would allow them to live. Above that, within four days, they would die. Now, 5.2 parts per million is way below the 25 parts per million that's allowed in sugar. It's way below the 40 parts per million that's allowed in our oil, right? So that was very concerning. And then recently, there was a study that came out that showed that uh, glyphosate stays viable in salt water for 315 days, especially dark salty water. So when I went to the Monsanto shareholder meeting in January to tell them how their products are hurting our children, I quoted those studies when they said we have plenty of studies showing safety. I named those studies and I said, what's in our womb? Dark salty water. And what is the size of a six week old fetus? It's the size of a shrimp. You must be responsible for the contamination of our mothers and our children and the pollution of this planet. Why do we have a 30% failure to conceive rate in America right now? We have the highest rate of infertility and miscarriage in recorded history. And it directly correlates with the Ip Peterson study of 3,000 pigs in Denmark, where he fed them. Um, when he did feed them glyphosate, they had a 3% miscarriage rate. When he fed them two parts per million of glyphosate, it went up to 30%. When he took it out of their brains, it went back down to 3%, and then back up to 30%. He did this repeatedly with 3,000 pigs. We have to take, we, they must take responsibility for what's happening. So we also continue to find, like I say, in Pediasure feeding tube liquid. This is, this, this is the food that gives children with cancer in hospitals, and it has over a thousand times um, higher levels of glyphosate that has been shown to destroy gut bacteria in children. And just so you know, the organic version, which is out there, it's called Liquid Hope. Um, I hope there will be more of them as well. They show phenomenal testimonials when the kids use them as a last resort and they switch over um, to actual real food that's organic and um, without pesticides. So we need to touch on the proposed collateral damage. And I know this is a, it's a sort of heavy fact on the slide, but I feel very uh, compelled to let you know about this as, as a mother, okay? So the proposed collateral damage, first of all, why do I say collateral damage? Well, because in World War II, when uh, the chemical companies no longer had a market after the war for their chemicals, they decided to create a new market. So they declared war on bugs and weeds. Think about it. Before then, they didn't use toxic chemicals on our farms. Um, once upon a time, all food was organic, right? We farmed organically. So our, I believe that our children are the collateral damage of this war. So glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor. These are the facts. And it causes birth defects, miscarriages, and infertility, and sterility. It's been shown in animals. Um, and right now in America, we have, as I mentioned earlier, 30% failure to conceive rate in the USA. That is an unspeakable number of miscarriages and babies. Now, glyphosate is also an antibiotic. It's patented as one, and it destroys gut bacteria and weakens the immune system. 
We have 24.7 million children with food intolerances. That's leaky gut. Food is leaking out of their small intestines. And we have a 79% increase in Crohn's disease in children in the past 10 years alone. And these, this data is only coming from hospital outpatients. That's not even from pediatricians. We also have a tripling of colitis in children in the past 10 years. And keep in mind that the gut bacteria is the only place where tryptophan, serotonin, and melatonin are made. And serotonin regulates insulin. A light bulb going off without insulin, you, you're going to have diabetes, right? So perhaps this is why we have a quadrupling of diabetes in our teens in the past 10 years. Without serotonin, you cannot also regulate moods and bipolar and mental dis disorders. We have in America 57.7 million Americans with mental illness. We only have 300 million people. This is a huge portion of our population. And you have to keep in mind, some of these people are most likely our politicians, our policemen, <laughs> our teachers, your neighbor, right? There's a reason why it seems like people are going crazy. It, it's, it's, a, it's a very huge issue. Um, yeah, so also, like I said, it's a key later, meaning mental, mineral deficiency and the inability to fight cancer. We just can't fight cancer without certain minerals. And we have 117 million Americans with cancer today, and cancer is the number one or number two killer of children, depending on where you live. This is unheard of. Before, it was always household accidents. Um, so the reality of health in America is that out of the top 17 most developed countries, the USA is last in health. Of the top developed countries, the USA is number one for infant deaths on day one. You will not want to believe this, and I didn't either, but according to Save the Children, the, the state of the world's mother's report states that, over 50, that America has 50% more babies that die on the first day of life in all of the industrialized world combined. This is not the news that you will hear on Fox or ABC or NBC because their commercials are purchased by the chemical companies that will make the chemicals that they spray on our crops and they make the pharmaceuticals to make us feel better. They bought out the media. One out of two of our children have a chronic illness. One out of two of American males and one out of three females are expected to get cancer. And pesticides are linked to a loss of IQ. American IQ has dropped 7.6 GMOs. This may not sound like a lot, but instead of 6 million people who are mentally impaired, we now have 9 million. And the loss of gifted and talented has dropped dramatically as well. I believe it's like 6 million down to 3 million. It's very dramatic. So what about feeding the world? Won't we all starve without GMOs and toxic pesticides? And we say simply no. GMOs are not working. You can look up data on the internet. I'm not a farmer. I'm not going to cover it. But the yields are not what they have promised. The super weeds have increased all over the place. There's uh, more crop disease. And there's uh, less resistance to drought. GMOs are simply not doing what they said that they would do. There's no benefit to human beings to consume them. Can we feed the world with organic food? Yes. Studies show organic farming leaves higher yields, more nutritious food, without toxic chemicals, and harm to our environment. We simply say we have faith in our farmers. Farmers are ingenious. They can farm as they have farmed for thousands of years without GMOs and toxic chemicals. And I'm very, very glad that New Zealand has not allowed GMOs on your, in your country. And I just, I think you should applaud yourselves for that, for not growing GMOs here. Thank you so much. So organic food, so Wisconsin farmer Will Allen grows 1 million pounds of vegetables and 10,000 fish on three acres. You can farm and make plenty of food for the world. By the way, the whole thing about being the world is a complete lie. We produce more food than we need to. It is not necessary for to have this industrial agriculture farming. We also um, can grow plenty of food to feed our people in our backyards. The DeMars family grows 6,000 pounds of food on a tenth of an acre. They feed their neighborhood. They have a whole uh, community, it's called a CSA, Community Something Program. <coughs> and can we landscape and have weed-free parks without Roundup? Yes, we are a committed community. They're called Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and they need community project services, right? We don't need Roundup. Uh, that is something that New Zealand uses a lot of, and I'm 
strongly urge you to go to your city councils and all get to that what you can do. <laughs> get rid of Roundup out of here. Okay, so the fact is, is that Americans waste 40% of our food and 40% of us are obese. And yet 16 million children go to bed hungry every night. This is completely hypocritical to what Monsanto is saying about feeding the world with GMOs. We have the most GMOs in our country. We should have the most, you know, everybody should be fed that, right? That's not the case. So as I said before, the current system is all for the profit of the chemical companies who both make the chemicals that they spray on the food and the drugs that they make us to feel better. It is a perfect profit circle for them. Syngenta, Bayer, Dow, Dow, DuPont, they all do both. And Monsanto used to be owned by Pfizer. So it's not the food that needs to be modified, it's the food industry. So what's happening is a lot of bad news. You guys just got served up a huge amount of bad news tonight. But what's the good news? The good news is that you are the good news. You and me, all of us together. Okay, here's what, here's what you can do, folks. Number one, grow, buy, and eat organic. Organic cereals, oils, meat, dairy, and all foods as soon as possible. Restore your gut bacteria with organic cultured foods raw organic sauerkraut or probiotics, kefir, kimchi, uh, kombucha, organic, it's gotta be organic yogurt please with not a lot of sugar in it or no sugar in it. Um, support serving organic foods at community centers and public events. And that may mean that you're the one, okay? Like for instance, I went to my preschool and said, what's your budget? I want to figure out a meal plan over Thanksgiving that you can, so you can serve organic and non-GMO snacks at preschool. And so I did that, and I got $123 under budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that plan is on my website, and you can do that too. You can use that for anybody. Um, you can also have the council members discontinue the use of Roundup and toxic chemicals on public areas. There simply is no need for them. They can pull them, or again, community service, or you can give jobs to people, right? And that may mean you going to your city council. Every, in, in America, everybody gets three minutes. You can talk about whatever you want and they have to hear you, and then you can give them information, get lots of people to sign up on signatures, and ask for something like, hey, let's try six months, right, pesticide free. And during that six months, we've got a committed team of people, we'll go to the park and we'll pick the weeds out of Sunday or whatever, right? Just give them the solution. And there's lots of other things, like there's steam uh, weeders, there's machines that have steam that get rid of weeds, there's vinegar, and there's, you know, there's all kinds of things, other solutions that you can use. Um, please declare your town, your school, your county, or your center Roundup free and GMO free. So keep in mind, if we don't buy it, they can't sell it. Moms <laughs> buy 85% of the food. Everyone either has a mom or is a mom. So please tell a mom about GMOs and why it's safe. Hmm, but organic costs too much, does it? Buying your own five pound bag of organic potatoes cutting them into french fries, and cooking, cooking them at home saves a family of five over $917 a year compared to buying fries at a fast food place twice a week. It's really astounding. My friend wrote a book called 15 Minute Healthy Organic Meals for less than $10 a day. And it's on Amazon, it's just like dinner, organic dinner, $2.50 for a chicken bowl that you would pay $10 for out of the restaurant at least. So you absolutely can do it. You plan ahead. You cook ahead, um, you, you budget, you may do things like, I don't know, I think you call it home kill here. It's, it's a, when you buy like half a cow, that sounds really dramatic to me. I don't want to say home kill in the United States. But, <laughs> go there. but you get that, but yeah, you buy a half a cow or whatever with your friends and neighbors, and it's like six ninety nine for a pound of, of, of for beef, everywhere from bones up to, to sirloin, right? It's much cheaper that way. So you absolutely can do it. Think about this. Soda costs $8.89 a gallon. Chips cost $8.45 a pound. Coffee, $20 a gallon. Holy cow, right? Plus, there's in America, we have farm subsidies up to $60 billion a year being given to GMOs and um, the GMO farmers and all that. Um, then there's the cost of treating all of these health issues. Autism costs a family $60,000 a year. Cancer can cost um, medical providers and a family $10,000 a month. So if you get cancer, I mean, it's gonna be at least $1,000 a month, even if you have great healthcare coverage. 
So it's very, very extensive. And then there's, of course, the incalculable damage to our children's bodies and brains. And also, um, like Dr. Michelle mentioned, stressed out parents. 80% of the families that have children with developmental disorders get divorced. That's a huge toll on our society. We have to stop this. We need to stand for our families and the health of our, our families and our communities and our children and say no more. So, of course, organic is a real bargain. We've got chicken here, $4.99 to $6.99 a pound for organic chicken. Oh, but then how do you get your kid to eat healthy food? Well, number one, don't buy junk food. Only buy what you're proud for them to eat. If you don't bring it in the home, they can't eat it, right? And number two, teach them what you know. My children have watched Genetic Roulette and um, Ted, uh, Robin Ryan's TED Talk, Patriotism on a Plate. They've watched the future of food and food in. Not all at once, I gave them a break. But they did watch it, and they get it. They really do get it. And um, my children, my sons, will not uh, eat McDonald's if they go to McDonald's on a, for a treat, um, nor will they, when we're traveling, they won't even pee at McDonald's. <laughs> so, um, yeah, teach them what you know. And be in charge also. Parents tell me, well, my kids won't eat it. They'll only eat this or that. Well, who's feeding them this or that, right? Exactly. Yes. Be in charge. Or the parent. You give them healthy food, period. Um, create a future of health and freedom. Here's the other thing. It's not going to be forever. Their, some, their tummies can heal. Maybe not for everything. But I asked my son, do you want to have a future, like a year from now, when you can eat that piece of birthday cake at a birthday party or one piece of pizza? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, we can work on this together. You know, I really think that we can um, can help you get better. And he said, well, okay. And I said, well, so we're going to be in partnership. He said, yes. And I said, so I promise you're going to get better. Now, that was scary for me because I didn't know how that was going to happen. But once I put my bottom on the line, we, he knew that I meant it. Right? And so he was in partnership with me. Every day he drank his green drink, he had his B12, he had his, um, it was like a science experiment. I'm not kidding, every morning. But he drank that drink. And like I said, a year later his allergies went down and he is dramatically better. He hasn't had an allergic reaction and I can't remember how long. How long. And that makes a difference for him, you know, so socially as well. So um, please expect them to make new decisions, as I mentioned, with or without you, and, and, and tell them that. You know, quit your trust in them. Make a deal. Give them stickers, rewards. My six-year-old had, had to give him stickers to eat raw organic sauerkraut with dinner every night, right? <laughs> but he does it. And he doesn't need the stickers anymore either. He just knows <laughs> that's what you do. Um, so, and then, of course, celebrate their decisions and acknowledge them. We ask you to please say yes to health and freedom. We have um, events that we're doing. We do things like movie nights and speaker series. And one of them is a mom's meetup. We've partnered with Western Aid Price Foundation. And we're having moms meet us all across the nation and we hope across the world. I know with the time zone difference, it may not happen at the same time. But we have moms meet us on May 2nd. And what we're hoping is that with just one person who has 15 people over at a meet up at a home or community center um, to share, support, and inspire action around health, having healthy communities. If those 15 people have only five people switch to organic, mom, sister, cousin, and two friends, and then all those five people have five people switch to organic, and then those five have five. And they're now all of a sudden spending $200 a week on organic food, which is very easy to do. Um, when you spread that out, um, actually first in that one location, that'll be 1,875 moms that are now, um, let's say they spend only 100 of that at local farmer's markets. That would be injecting $6.5 million into your local economy, directly to your farmers and supporting the health and future of your economy. Now, spread out over 200 locations that have already signed up for our Moms Meetup, we're going to cause a $4 billion shift to organic. And we can do this across the nation. We don't have to wait for the regulators. We don't have to wait for labeling. We can ban GMOs and toxic chemicals from our tables right now. And believe me, that the food manufacturers will hear that, right? And they will start to change. So here's a list of GMO info movies that you can watch. And we'll make sure that you can get those on GMO Free New Zealand. And I just want to say thank you very, very much for your attention. I know I've been long and this whole event been long, um, but if you, I'm sure if you have questions or anything, that we will answer those at the end. Um, before we conclude, I want to say again that we at Moms Across America, we also have Moms Across the World. We go on our Facebook page and we have a website as well. We're partnered with Madonna Shiva on that. And um, we, again, we will not stop. 
We are not going to give up because the love for our children will never end. And you can count on us to be in partnership with you for a healthy global economy and uh, global uh, communities. And we hope that now you are in partnership with us as well. Thank you so much.